Sometimes initial impressions can be deceiving, and when I looked at the press releases for Nevermorn, I thought, ooh, a mindless hack and slash where you play as a necromancer, quite fancy that. And very quickly, I found that whilst there is definitely hacky slashy elements to this game, it's far more strategic in the way how you battle. And that's because, as a necromancer, you build your army that comes with you into various arena battles based on who you've killed and who you want to revive. And as your army constantly changes against the waves of enemies that you're trying to battle against, you need to adapt not just your army, but your own skills, both physical and magical, to try and combat what's going on around you. This means that you can't just run in charging constantly all the time. You're deciding whether you want to attack or defend and protect your army, and depending on who gets killed, you can sacrifice some of your army and then revive other things that you've just killed because they're going to be better for what lies ahead or what you're currently dealing with now. This then made me think that Nevermorn is probably one of the more fluid, combative experiences that I've played recently. And from that perspective, it really didn't match my expectations in the best way possible. And I hope that kind of makes sense as I explain this game. You start off as this necromancer who is trying to uh, challenge death with your weapon. And your weapon has a dark and light side. You need to constantly flip between the two, but depending on what you're doing then depends on what skills you have available. And you can see those on the bottom of the screen. On the dark side, you'll be thinking about attacking enemies, but also sacrificing your own army so that you can then free up slots to then slip to light mode and revive some of the people from the dead, that your monsters from the dead that you want to now have on your army. But also that's where some of your healing magical uh, uh, buffs and defensive sides of things come into play too. You're constantly deciding what you need from either side and all of your skills down at the bottom of the screen have cooldowns. So it reminds me of hack and slash versus MMO in terms of triggering all the different things that you've got. And you can do this using keyboard and mouse and it works quite well with a controller too. And I played most of my time on the Xbox controller. Just be aware that this game's in early access and the menus don't seem to work very well with a controller. But I'm sure that will get changed later on in development. So, the moment-to-moment -moment gameplay of Nevermorn sees you running from arena to arena, different sizes and shapes and different backdrops, but essentially mostly circular. <laughs> and inside there you'll have waves of enemies that will attack you. Some will be like cannon fodder that will be busy charging around, but then you'll get bigger giants that you can then try and slay too. Your army can be filled out with various different types of minions. Some will be ranged archers, some will be more brawler types, some will be more magical. And then you'll be able to add on additional monsters too. And again, they can lean towards the magical or the more brawlery type. And they get upgraded over time so that their spells that they're able to cast or the attacks that they're able to do get better the further you progress in the game. The game in Early Access currently has three different areas with a mixture of different level runs inside and you'll see your progress in the top right hand side of the screen as you kind of build up this challenge towards death at the end of each area where you'll face a big gigantic boss and hopefully move for a portal to the next level. There's a few really interesting spins on this game though that I've not touched on yet. The first one is that as you lose your health down at the bottom side of the screen, you'll start to incur additional like bleed damage. And this means that the maximum HP that you can get back to doesn't necessarily match the full HP gauge or gorge that you've got. And so what you need to do when you reach sanctuary arenas is decide whether or not you're going to use some of the currency that you've collected over time to cleanse yourself and get rid of your, I guess, karmic debt so that you can get your full HP back again because you've been cursed and your HP reduces slowly over time, or whether or not you want to spend that currency to either upgrade the base stats of your minions and giants and you won't be able to just do that carte blanche you'll have upgrading the ranged attacks versus the magic versus the brawlers versus the giants whatever it is that you've got or 
you can choose to upgrade your magical abilities or attack abilities of the actual Me Necromancer too. And this again adds into that layer of just how fluid you want each run in Nevermorn to be and it's truly the biggest strength of this game because each run feels genuinely unique and interesting depending on what arrives in these sanctuary shops but also what you get asked, uh, offered to you as upgrades when you clear different arenas. Some arenas, and again you get to choose this before you run into arena, might be that you upgrade some of your minions, it might be that it's just a big I'll collect some dosh but then you don't get an upgrade there and then and you need to be confident that you can survive the next wave of enemies in that arena to then spend the money later so it's a bit of a spend to save if that makes sense. Some of it might be just upgrading your own abilities instead or it could be that you get to get a gift of augmentation and this allows you to say add a burn ability to one of your attacks or something like that or if you're going to do say an area of effect heal that it will also give it a shield and invincibility for a few seconds and they're quite powerful but sometimes you'll get roulette wield something that's just not very useful to your run so it's a big risk to go with it sometimes too. As you're doing all of this, obviously your army is forever changing, so you might be buying upgrades for things then that actually your army never quite gets the benefit of what you've bought. So again, it's all swings and roundabouts, and that's really the beauty of Nevermourn. You're never quite sure what you're going to get next, so you're going to have to kind of rely potentially on some of your favourites or be very experimental and just deal with what you've got in front of you at that time. When you've then died which happened to me very, very often, <laughs> you then get taken into the overworld skill tree. Now, as you unlock, uh, level up, sorry, through XP from general runs, you'll unlock more skills, more spells, upgrade the actual necromancer itself, but also you'll gain access to a wider army so that you can take more into battle with you. But you also gain upgrade points to take onto your skill tree of again light versus dark so if you go into the light area that's all about increasing your health limits increasing the amount of uh, regen that a piece of magic might do also increasing the health of your minions for example or the ability that they can replenish health quicker as well so it's all geared towards that and shields and invincibility stuff like that if you go to the dark side it's all around building up the amount of attack damage that you can get or the attack damage that your minions can do and depending on how you play you I mean it all of it is very very useful but you can kind of prioritize whether you want to be much more on the attack or on the defensive and both strategies are very valid in Nevermore. This is a game that's still in early access. It took me many many hours to get to area three of three that's currently there but they're saying that they're going to be dropping more in over time. There is an overarching story obviously that's not quite finished because not all of the areas have dropped in yet but I really liked the general look and feel of this game. The soundtrack is great, the movement feels fluid and I also really like the idea that quite a lot of your skills trigger things for each other or for your minions so it might be that you cast a spell but the actual spell is like an area of effect and depending on how many of your own minions are inside that area of effect will then trigger other things so you can tee things up so that there's a constant cascade of healing or attack depending on where you are and what you're doing and it felt like the fights were dynamic and that's really quite difficult to do when you've got lots of things all charging at you. Sometimes they all kind of queue up in a line to attack. That doesn't really happen here and it's a better game for it. Now this game is still in early access and that kind of shows from the variety of enemies that are available and also the variety of backgrounds of the arenas that you're in. The three arenas or levels that you go around are quite rinse and repeat and quite dry but hopefully with more arenas and a variety a deeper variety of enemies this game will really see the potential that it absolutely has 
And yeah, if you don't mind going in early and having a little bit of the same type of enemies coming up over and over again, but having a very dynamic and different way of playing each time, Nevermourn is already a great pickup as it is now, and hopefully will be even better over the course of time. Higher Plane Games is part of the Higher Plane Network, a completely independent media outlet supported by people like you. The goal is to create the best possible content that cultivates a richer indie scene for games as well as music and entertainment. To find out more and to get involved, visit patreon.com forward slash higher plane network. Your support makes all the difference and in return you'll gain access to bonus content and downloads. Thank you for watching.